Hey everybody, it's Jamie from No Getting Off This Train. It is the last Friday of the month. That means it is time for another episode of Breakfast with Bacon. Let me take you through the happenings of June, all the cool things that happened, and what I'm looking forward to about next month. I honestly can't believe that June is almost over. Allison starts back school like mid-August or something like that, so I feel like the summer vacation has flown by. But I mean, maybe it's a good thing. We're having so much fun just about every single day. We filled our days with things like Kings Island and parks and, well, lots of movie days, you know, just relaxing, something that we need to do during a summer break. And we've already done so much stuff in June. I can't wait to share it all with you. So today I've got six cool things that have happened in the month of June. And then a few things that we're looking forward to in July. Number one, we had a large family garage sale a couple weeks ago. Now, I don't typically keep stuff for garage sales because as soon as I find stuff that we don't need, like it goes straight to Goodwill. So I don't usually have a lot of random things laying around. But then my grandma had a garage sale. And so then I started looking around for everything, found quite a few things. We sold all of my trading cards, like my Pokemon cards, Magic the Gathering, things like that. Just like random clothes and things. And then Allison went through her bookshelf and she found all sorts of kids books that she wanted to donate. Now this girl, she's in, going to be in second grade, but she reads at a much higher level. So she's reading like all these different chapter books. And a lot of the books that she had were just like, you know, really tiny ones with simple words that were just boring for her. So she went through and donated bags and bags of books. And her bookshelf right now, it looks so much cleaner, so much nicer, so much more organized. And now she can fit more chapter books in there. So we have a half price books in our area, probably about like 20 minutes or so away. And we try to go there a couple times a year and buy all these different chapter books for her. She's been really enjoying like Junie B. Jones. I got her into the Wayside School series, which was my favorite when I was a kid. But I'm just happy that her bookshelf is a whole lot nicer, a lot more organized, and more age appropriate for her now. Number two, you probably already saw the video, but we went to Cedar Point a couple weeks ago as well. And I'll link that video down below in case you haven't seen it yet. But we actually have two trips planned for this month. Our second trip, we're actually going this weekend. I don't know yet if I'll do a video because there's not much else to see. I might do some because there's actually one part of the park that we didn't even go through in our one and a half days. They have this, this I think it's called Frontier Town or something, and they have a giant play area. Think like almost like a McDonald's play place. You get to climb and go down slides and things. They have that there for the kids well, and grownups to play on. And Allison loved it when we were there a couple years ago, but it wasn't open the last time we were there. So this time around, I'm thinking she's going to want to go up there and play for a while, especially when it gets really busy and the lines for the rides are like 30, 60 minutes. She has no patience for that sort of thing. So I might record a little bit while we're there. And no, we do not get tired of going to these amusement parks. I know we go like once a week to Kings Island, maybe sometimes even twice a week. And then like our special trips to Cedar Point, we don't really get tired of it. We love the rides. We love the atmosphere. We love the food and we have the season passes. So, you know, why not? Number three is KiwiCo. I don't know if you parents have ever heard of KiwiCo, but it is a subscription box you can get for your kids like every month or so. And it has like different STEM activities or I guess STEAM because there's art in there now too. But it goes by age level. They have like art things. They have engineering, math, science, that all sorts of things to inspire your kid to create, to think, that sort of thing. Last year during the pandemic, because we couldn't go anywhere, they, they were having some sort of a special. So John and I decided we would get Allison a three month subscription. So she would get one 
for each month of summer vacation, just to kind of have something to look forward to each month. And she loved them. She loved putting them together. And I think the one we got for her was the Kiwi Crate. And that was more of like an engineering, like you build whatever. So this year we decided to do it again for her and get her a six month subscription because it was like a really cheap price. I can't remember exactly how much it was. But we also bumped her up in age level. So you could have like a doodle crate, which is art. There is one for engineering or something. But she wanted the doodle crate because she is huge into art and drawing and coloring. So she got her first one a few weeks ago. And this one was a portfolio that she could make. It was like a a leather, pretend leather portfolio. She got to like sew it all together. She got to decorate it with the little beads and she started using it. She put like her, her papers and pens and stuff in there. She loved it. And a few of you have shown interest in seeing the next one. So when we get the next one, I will schedule a live so that we can unbox it for you. Now this isn't sponsored by KiwiCo in any way, but it's really fun for the kids. And I just wanted to show you like in case your kids are bored during the summer, this is something cool that they could work on. The next two are going to show my nerdy side a little bit. Number four, we got the game Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch. Now way back in the day, like back in the N64 days, there was a Pokemon Snap game that my sister and I had, and we played that one like crazy. This is just a Pokemon game where you go and take pictures of Pokemon and like natural habitats. So you go through forests, you go through beaches, volcanoes, that sort of thing. You just take pictures of Pokemon and you get high scores based on how close you are to the Pokemon and how, how centered they are in the picture. It's really addicting. So when I found out that they were doing a complete remake or just like an actual new game for the Switch, I'm like, we need to get this. And we've been playing it every single day since we got it. We beat the game. There's still a whole lot more that you can do in it, but Allison loves looking at all the new Pokemon. When you level up, sometimes they'll do different things in the game and she just loves seeing them. She won't play it herself yet. She's not that confident in herself, but she loves sitting there and watching me play. It's something we try to do in the afternoons about an hour or so every day. It's one way that we can bond. I believe that video games can be a learning experience for kids. That's how I learned to read was by watching my dad play those RPGs where we would read all the words on the screen. And I passed that along to Alice and that's how she learned to read as well. And now she's a pro at Animal Crossing and I don't have to read these things to her anymore. So yes, the video games can be educational. And number five, nerdy stuff, Neopets. Did anybody else have a Neopets account when they were younger? Or do you still have your account? I created mine back in high school. It must have been like 15 years ago. And I was obsessed with this game. It's just an online game, browser based, where you, you have like this Neopet. It's basically a pet that you can take care of. You can play games with it, feed it. And then there's like a whole community around this game. You can create a shop and you can buy and sell items for your shop. I mean, it's like a whole entire world. And I played for a very long time. When Allison was born, I kind of strayed away for a little while. And then recently, I wanted to get back into it again. And to my dismay, I found out that my account had gotten disabled, frozen. And I had no idea why. I couldn't get into my account. And I was kind of devastated because that was like 15 years of work put into this account. But then I'm like, you know, I did a lot of stuff on there. I think it'd be fun to start over and try again. So I created a new account and I've been playing a little bit here and there every day. And I am quickly realizing how addicting it is. So if you have a Neopets account, feel free to add me. My username is better with bacon. I'm going to add my link down there if you want to request to be my friend or whatever. Um, we can hang out. 
And number six is just an update on my marathon training. A few of you have asked me how it's been going. So far, it's been going pretty well. I am on week, I think week 12 or 13 or something like that. Now, I will say last week was really, really tough. So with the way my marathon training is going, I'm doing the run walk method. And this particular plan only has me running three days a week. So two of my runs are 30 minutes each at just, you know, whatever I can run and walk. And then my third run of the week is my long run. And that fluctuates higher and lower mileage depending on the week. So one week it'll be four miles and then it'll go up to nine miles and then four miles and then like 10 miles. So back and forth like that. Last week was a 10 and a half mile run. So there's a lot of stuff going on that week. I went to Kings Island the that Tuesday when I was supposed to run that evening. Trying to get your attention. Trying to get your attention. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that this is the joy of working from home. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right, so what was I saying? Oh, so, okay, marathon training. So I went to Kings Island the day I was supposed to do a 30 minute run, but I got like 15,000 steps that day. So I'm like, oh, I don't need to run. I got my mileage in that day. That may have been a mistake, I don't know. But I got my other 30 minute run in, and then when it was time for my 10 and a half mile run, that was just a weird day. I was feeling the effects of the vaccine I got the day before. So I was a little bit achy. I started my run a little later in the day. Um, I had to wait until like a break in the thunderstorms. So like the entire time I was praying that it wouldn't rain. So I was not able to complete my entire 10 and a half miles. I did 10, which is a lot and it was only a half mile short. So the way that I'm running right now is 30 seconds of running and 30 seconds of walking, just back and forth like that. Somewhere around like mile seven, I had to change it up and run for 15 seconds and walk for 30 seconds. And you can do that and you know, during your run, you can modify it however you need to. And I like what Jeff says, where if you can't run, then walk. And if you can't walk, then crawl, um, just whatever you need to do in order to reach your goal. So I was able to get to the 10 miles and even then I walked like that last mile. It was really, really tough for me. And I have a 12 mile run scheduled for this week. So I'm hoping that like all the stars align or something like that so that the, this run just turns out better than last week and then I can actually make the 12 miles. So yeah, that was tough. Not every run is going to be the best run ever and I'm still trying to learn that. Other than that though, it's still going fine. I love running. I'm still excited for this marathon, October 17th. So I'm counting down the days. So as you can see, there's been a lot of stuff going on in June. Now July, there's a lot of really awesome stuff happening. And most of it though is just revolving around amusement parks. So John and Allison and I are taking a week long trip in mid July down to like the North South Carolina border and Virginia. So they have two amusement parks down there. One of which is the Carowinds and the Carowinds is actually in both states. So part of it is in North Carolina and part is in South Carolina. And the cool thing about that is that you can see the line at the front of the park. So theoretically you could put one foot in one state and one foot in the other state, you know, take pictures. We do that every time we go. It's, it's a good time. But we're going to spend like four days at that amusement park. And then we're going to drive three hours away and spend like two or three days at King's Dominion. Now the Carowinds we went to in 2019 and 2018. Now 2017 is the last time we went to King's Dominion. Allison was like three and a half years old. She doesn't remember a whole lot of it. And to be honest, neither do I. I don't remember a lot of it either. So we are going to go. And now that Allison's a lot bigger, she can ride some of the bigger rides. So I'm excited to see what's changed, what Allison can ride now, that sort of thing. 
I'm just excited. I'm going to try to have a few videos on that of like healthy snacks to bring with you, breakfast ideas when you're on the road. We're going to be eating there a lot because we have the meal plan. You can eat for free twice a day. So lunch and dinner. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Let me just say that. And then besides that, we will be going to Kings Island about once a week or something like that. We just cannot get enough of our amusement parks. And then I have park visits planned like splash pads and other things just to try and get Allison outside and playing. But yeah, our week long trip is the one, the big one that we're really all looking forward to. So that is all I have for today. Leave me a comment and let me know what are you looking forward to in July? Or what is one thing that happened in June that has just been really exciting for you? I want to celebrate with you. I'll be sure to keep you all updated with everything, just the, the trips and things like that. But in the meantime, if you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and do so right now. And like this video and ring that bell down there and that way you'll be notified when my other videos come out like my grocery hauls, recipes, and meal planning tips. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you later. Did you know I offer one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching? Whether your goal is to lose weight, eat healthier, or just want to know how to get started, I can help. You can schedule a free weight loss discovery call by using the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to chat with you.